Now, uh, 3.2 was about the categories of information used by individuals. 3.3 looks specifically at how information is used by organizations. Now, some of the people who work in those organizations are obviously individuals, and they would use all the same information categories that we looked at as individual citizens. But as an organization, as a business, as a charity, um, whatever their you know, um, kind of reason for existing is, they will have information that's specific to them, and they will use that information to uh, do certain jobs for them and help them to make decisions and so on. So there are several uh, ways that the exam board wants us to uh, know about and think about in terms of the way organizations use their specific information. So sometimes this information is collected by the organizations themselves. Sometimes it's done for them in, in terms of surveys. They might get some other company to do that for them. But this information is managed by them, and often it is then created by them, even if the data is collected elsewhere. And what do they use it for? Well, they use it for things like modeling. They help, they use the information to help them to come up with models which they can use to come up with scenarios. Well, what if we did this? And what if we did that? And what if we change this? And what if we launch this product? And what if we launch this product at this time of year? Or what if we try doing this on our website? Or try using these emails to contact our customers? So they come up with models to kind of help them think about what their business looks like right now and what it might look like maybe six months, a year down the line. They also have management information systems. And if you've used Pro Portal within the colleagues, then you've used a section of that management information system because it has registration entries on it. So you can check your own personal details, your own registrations, whether you were marked in a lesson or not. You can see your tracking. You can see whether you've been graded or whether you need to do some more work because you've been given a referral. That's all part of the management information system because it's a system that manages information. And one of the main reasons people have these systems is because it helps them keep track of their employees, of the records, their qualifications, their medical issues, whether they are due uh, to uh, go on holiday, how much holiday they've got left for the current year, and, and all of these kind of things. It might keep a track of what training they've done and whether they are due to uh, update their uh, training because they're uh, unfamiliar with changes in the law around data protection or diversity or, or safety and so on. They also use information... If you're a business and you're looking to make money from people, then marketing is a big thing for you. Promoting your products and trying to get people to buy them. Looking at old sales and seeing whether you can see any products that maybe did really well and might do well again in the future. So what's, what's trending at the moment? Can we capitalize on that? Can we market that? Can we make some profit off the back of that? A big thing that sales departments tend to do is financial analysis. And again, modeling is a big thing here as well. So how much money did we spend last quarter? How much money do we anticipate looking at our model? How much do we think we'll spend next quarter? What are our profits going to look like? What did they look like this time last year? Are we likely to see an increase in profits over the Christmas period? What does that look like in terms of forecasting and making a best guess at what sales might look like in the future? Contact management, we mentioned earlier. Again, it's just a system that manages your contacts. So your customers' details and your staff details will probably be in your contact management system, and you use that then to promote your company to send out uh, flyers or emails or adverts for your uh, uh, product or for your services to your customers. Organizations use information to help them make decisions. So you can look at how 
different stores have been doing in different regions of the country. And then you can look at what is happening in the country in terms of, you know, how much money people are spending. Is anything having effects on the high street? Are uh, online shops doing better than shops on the high street? So you have a look at all the information and you decide, should we open a new store? Should we maybe just expand our website? Should we be closing stores down? All these things, um, these decisions are made on the information that the organization has about how well they're doing and, and so on. And then we've got internal and external communication. So emails, um, team meetings, all of these document stores, uh, information on your intranet, that's all part of internal communication. And then we have external communication. We might contact our customers. We might contact other companies that we do business with. They're all external communications. So finally, we have big data. And this is data that is collected by, by the shed load. Every single click on Facebook, for example, everything that you read, every time you like, every time you share, every time you uh, make a comment, every time someone likes your comment, every time you share a meme, every single click, every single mouse click is recorded and then you can look at the analytics for Facebook and you can look and see who's been doing what, where they've been going, what they've been looking at, how long were they there for, how many things did they click on, did they go anywhere else after that, where did they go, and that helps you to target your customers with adverts. Netflix has 100 million subscribers now, and all the analytics from all of those subscribers, what are they watching, how long did they watch it for, what things are popular, what things are not popular. All these things help them to decide what to ditch from the platform, what to add to the platform. And all of these um, uh, uh, tiny, tiny mouse clicks that we do on a daily basis, they help Netflix to decide what to do next with the, uh, uh, the company and you know what videos are going to be good and what maybe aren't and where they can make more money from these things or become a better company provide better customer services. So let's have a quick look at an exam style question here. It's a 10 mark question. And it asks, how can a management information system used by human resources in a multi a multinational rather organization be used? So they want you to kind of explain, discuss, come up with examples of how a, uh, an organization that is in multiple countries could use a management information system in its human resources department. So let's have a look at some of the things that they suggest are good answers to this question. Now, it's another one of these where the mark band is determined by how well it's reasoned, how well it's structured, how well it's presented, how well the examples you give support your answer, how logical uh, your answers are. So some of the things they're suggesting are the organization is multinational, which means HR departments in different countries, in different buildings, in different parts of the world, will all be able to access information from the one system. This means employees can move from one country to another and all of the records will be accessible regardless of where they are. All emergency details can be collected and gathered and stored in the MIS and very quickly looked up if there's an accident at work or if the person's got a medical condition, they know who the next of kin is and so on. All the information can be backed up centrally because the MIS is most likely sitting on its own central server. All employees can access their records and know how much holiday they've got left to take. They can make a request for holiday regardless of where they are in the world. Holiday requests can be authorised centrally by a manager. Adequate staff can then be put in place to cover any absences. Job promotions and job training, that can all be done uh, on the MIS as well. 
they can look and see if they can spot any patterns. Does this person seem to always be going to their grandma's funeral, even though they've been to their grandma's funeral already four times? So can we see a bit of a pattern? Can we spot someone's actually, you know, taking us for a bit of a ride here? Or are they genuinely ill? And if they are, are they ill a lot? Are they always ill on a Monday? Payroll can be integrated within the management information system so that everybody gets paid and they get paid correctly and they pay the right amount of tax and national insurance and so on. Functions within human resources can also be analysed, including have we got enough staff? Can we uh, uh, think about recruiting some new people? Are we tracking people in their jobs? Are we you know, making uh, uh, the right decisions about putting the right people in the right job roles. And any other reasonable suggestion that links in with this idea that it's human resources, it's a management information system, and it's multinational would have got you some marks as an answer to this question.